There is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Five times a day, from mosques and minarets all over the Muslim world, that call goes out from Amwazen, calling the faithful to prayer. And a good Muslim will answer these calls, because it's an essential part of his religion, a demanding religion which is spread from the Middle East to Europe, to Africa, to Asia, even to America. But prayer itself is just one outward observance of this religion, of Islam. There are others, many others, because Islam doesn't just mold men's minds. It dictates their way of life. It tells them not just when and how to pray, but how to decorate their houses, how to treat their wives, what to say when they sneeze, how they must butcher their sheep, how much of their property their sons will inherit, how to trim their beards and seal their letters, where to carry their handkerchiefs and the colour of their shrouds. But here in Turkey, once called the Sword of Islam, here in Istanbul, with the minarets of its 500 mosques piercing the sky, here all the traditions of a great faith were trampled on by one man, one man trying to drag his nation into the Western world of the 20th century by the seat of its baggy Turkish breeches. Mustafa Kemal was the man who changed all that. Kemal, who called himself Ataturk, the father of the Turks, was the soldier who led his country's revolution and proclaimed Turkey a republic after the First World War. Ataturk wanted no religious censor to strangle the great rush forward into the 1920s, no petrifying theologians to halt progress. Of all his revolutionary decrees, and there were many of them, his destruction of the caliphate was his most heretical action.